It's Hermitcraft time, but not in the way you may expect. You see, I joined Hermitcraft in Season 2. There was a whole season of Hermitcraft before I existed on the server. I really wanted to join. In fact, I asked and got rejected. I was a massive fan. I watched all the different perspectives, and now I'm going to revisit the first world 10 years later. Let's see what we can find. Okay, the world is loading in. Uh, I, I have absolutely no idea if this is even going to work. <laughs> There's probably a lot of conversions that need to be done here. I also have no idea where we're going to spawn in. Okay, yes! I actually remember this. I remember this. I kind of remember this. I knew- I knew it! I knew- I knew this was a Joe Hills thing. How is this- how is Joe Hills still like this? <laughs> Like, I, I immediately saw this and I was like, this was definitely built by Joe Hills. It was. Oh, this is the slime farm. This is where the drops of the slime farm came up. I remember seeing that. Who built this? I can kind of remember. Oh, it's Joe Hills again. Oh, and that tree over there, that was a build by Cube Hamster. I remember this thing being massive. But I think Iskal's tree in Hermitcraft Season 7 has just tainted the size of every tree for me. This whole town is a lot smaller than I expected it to be, actually. These melon and pumpkin towers that were constructed by Exumavoid, I can vividly remember. I remember watching that episode and just being so excited for survival Minecraft. You have to understand, at the time I was just making redstone tutorials, and I watched these videos, and I just thought to myself, I, I need to get in on the action. So it basically inspired me to create my own survival world. I'm fairly certain this structure is by Jassassin. There doesn't seem to be a sign, but I'm 99% certain there is because I remember him really struggling with the diagonal roof. And then I think this is Unhost's place, and that up there immediately looks like a Corallis build. I'm fairly certain Corallis was on the server at this point in time. How was Corallis building things this cool back then? We had about five blocks to play with. I'd be happy with this now. It's so interesting to see this build be an Exuma build because it still has a hint of Exuma to it. You can see where his building style has evolved from. I really love that Cube Hamster joined the Hermitcraft server and just brought his redstone testing world with him. He's just built, he's just built a little redstone testing area here. The waves of nostalgia I'm feeling for this world right here are massive. I just remember watching this world, this shopping district, on my phone in bed. This was the only time I've been purely a viewer of Hermitcraft. Okay, I have to check out this thing over here. I think I remember this. I'm fairly certain this was created using lava and water. It definitely has the hallmarks of a lava and water structure. I cannot remember who built this, but I can now remember watching the video. I feel like it might have been Monkey Farm. Oh my goodness, I was right. I can't tell you how strange this is for me. <laughs> this is really, really weird being in a world... I mean, I guess this is how you feel. Now I understand. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of cool to know that people actually probably walk around the worlds that that all of us hermits build now and and feel the same way that I do now. <laughs> I'm weirdly getting emotional, that's strange. I should build Connect 4 and Hermitcraft Season 9. Connect 4 is the perfect game to play when you're bored, and I imagine, I mean, this redstone still has to work, right? So yeah, I can, I mean, I can play Connect 4 against myself. It's probably not quite as exciting, but this is cool. You can even have it self-reset itself with slime blocks so you don't have to manually refill the top. That's actually a fun redstone project. Right, let's move away from the starter village and start making our way to people's individual bases. So I'm hoping everything should still be working on the other side. And I remember this, the chains. This is a really cool nether hub. Now I really want to find Exuma's nether tunnel because I remember he put so much effort into that nether tunnel. It was like a multi-episode thing. It's another thing that just weirdly inspired me to play Minecraft. And I think I found it. I mean, this does feel familiar. Let's have a look. I'm gonna hop on the minecart and hopefully we have enough momentum to actually get up here. Yes, I can remember this. I remember this. Yeah, we've got the corners and then yeah, there was multiple different designs. Yes, these, these pillars right here, these are something that I copied for my own builds a bunch. All right, now we've got the diagonal section and then there's a slightly different design for this area as well. And then it transitions into the nether brick stuff. Yes, I remember all of this. This is so strange. And here we are. This is it, the map, the map, the map. I remember this. So Exuma's base is on an island and he mapped out the whole thing. This is really cool. Yeah, that was the name of it, Avalon. I remember now. Yeah, I remember the color coded hub. And what I'm looking for is the huts. There's a handful of huts. There they are. There they are. There's a specific episode of Exuma Void's Let's Play where he's constructing these huts and he's talking through the process of building up the bottoms of them and everything like that and, and walking walking the viewers through what he's thinking. And look, looking back, the builds, I mean, they're all right. They're quite nice. 
but they're nothing that special. But what I really loved about that episode is you were watching someone work out creative problems, trying to solve creative problems and, and, and just work things out, talking through the process. It's like a design process, you know. It's super cool to be in this place after all this time, and it's also super cool to see almost how small scale it is. It definitely feels like a different era of Minecraft. It's a little bit unpolished and a little bit messy, but there is... There's a certain amount of magic to that. These farms are super cool. This ice farm's pretty nice. This enchanting room is super fancy, and I seem to remember this setup was toggleable in some way, like you could choose the number of levels you wanted. And this here was the mob fighting arena where mobs would drop down, I assume from up there, from a mob farm, and, and you would be able to fight them in this area here. This is like decked out version 0.000001. Let's go and check out Red Eyes. Red Eyes is another member of the Hermitcraft server that I used to watch religiously. And if I remember correctly, his base is in a swamp and there's a witch farm there. I was completely wrong. He's actually in a jungle. There is a witch farm somewhere that he constructed, but now it's all coming back to me. This is the mob farm. Yes, yeah, so there's a mob farm up there, and then there's all sorts of farms and things kind of slotted into the landscape. This is a really cool looking build in a slightly chaotic way. There's all sorts of old automated tree farms and things. And it seems like actually all of the mob farms, because there's a bunch of them all connect up to this central point here. They're all connected by interesting waterways and things. It's really cool to see all these old funnel based farm designs. I would assume this is a wither skeleton farm. I mean, we are in a nether fortress. I was just on the lookout for the nether portal to the witch farm and I found Jassassin's underwater base. This is also, this is another thing that I used to watch a bunch. I found it ridiculously cool that someone could actually build a base underwater. I thought it was just the most challenging thing you could possibly do because of course, you have to clear out the water, and I just couldn't imagine how frustrating that would be. I mean, now that I'm here, the scale of it isn't exactly massive. Uh, it's It would take a little bit of work, but it's not enormous. But then we have to remember that this is pre-sponge days. This building's really, really lovely, though. I still build stuff like this. This, this is my go-to sort of pattern, I would say. And in fact, I remember building something inspired by this either on Geomine or in my own survival world way back in 2012 or 2013. People really liked to build with glass back in the day, didn't they? But on the topic of big empty round things, I'm gonna make my way over to Biffa's base, Biffa's Bowl. This to me was genuinely one of the most ambitious projects I'd ever seen someone take on in survival Minecraft. It was a giant space of ocean that has been cleared out and then terraformed. I'm in the wrong place. I'm very much in the wrong place. But now I'm very much in the right place. And you know what? This place still holds up. This is massive. This is a big project. Remember, pre-sponge, okay? This had to be cleared out by hand using a bunch of sand. I would say there are some slightly questionable block palette choices for the centerpiece of the structure, but this is gorgeous. I love this floor design. This is really, really cool. Oh yeah, I remember now because this is built in an end. That, okay, the block palette choice makes sense now. So this was built in a stronghold. You can see parts of the library and, and things things from the stronghold in the actual structure itself, and then the end portal is the center, which is a pretty cool center to your base. Yes, yeah, so there's all the sand storage there, and then I think down here, there was parts of a farm. Yeah, yeah, so it's all the drops from the mob farm. There's the house from up, which I believe was constructed by Corallis, although I could be wrong, that doesn't actually look like a Corallis build, but it is a Corallis build. And you know what? No, it does look like a Corallis build. There's bushes everywhere. I am kind of amazed by, and I don't want this to sound mean, but but by how unfinished everything sort of looks from everyone. <laughs> you know, there's lots of like half finished projects everywhere, but there's a certain charm to that. Next up, I wanna head over to Hypno's base. But first I have to mention, there's a lot of terraforming of the nether in this Hermitcraft world. And I think it's because Silk Touch was just added the update that this server came online. So then the novelty of being able to bring grass into the nether it's just everyone was doing it. I also feel like the grass color wasn't quite so aggressively horrible in this update, so this would have looked a lot lusher and greener. Now, if I remember correctly, Hypno had two bases. I could be wrong there. This is a very long tunnel. Goodness gracious me. Now, if I remember correctly, this should be an almost Mayan-style temple in a jungle. Or was that in Hermitcraft Season 3? Okay, well, we're off to a good start. Yes. There it is! Oh my goodness, and a blast from the past there, look at that! Old school iron farm designs. The old stackable ones. Back when villagers just relied on doors. 
having a certain number of doors near to them. This is actually quite an impressive looking structure, you know. This feels very, very Minecrafty, And I do seem to remember the inside being nice. Uh... Evidently not. <laughs> oh no, it seems like I was right. Yes, yes, there it is. That's what I'm talking about. This is really nice. This is really, really nice. And I seem to remember I almost definitely stole this idea for many of my builds. I absolutely love the bushy ceiling and I really, really like these farms. These are lovely. This is a really cool place. You know, the, the leaf, the leafy edges with the lights underneath is also cool. This is... This is nice. Hypno also had another underground base, which had a mob farm in it and all sorts of different redstone contraptions and things. I found it super cool, but I have no clue where that's located. As a mega fan of the Hermitcraft series, it's all gradually coming back to me, and that's kind of a strange sensation. I've just gone down a very long and very fancy nether tunnel. I have no clue where I am right now. Oh, I definitely watched this person but I can't remember who did it. I initially thought it might be another Exumavoid build, but it's actually Joostra. I really like this. This feels alive, especially with the villagers wandering around. It's really cool. I have located another ridiculous farm. This one, I believe, was either Exuma or Red Eyes. Goodness me, it's still pretty efficient. It's so cool just looking around a world that means so much to me without me ever actually <laughs> having played on it. Static. Static is another person that I used to watch. Static was actually in the Redstone community, working on Redstone contraptions and things. He also famously created the Spawn Point series I believe which is where he tested blocks to see if mobs could spawn on them that's a series that he then passed over to Exuma when static stopped uploading this isn't static space but I have found that hypno base that I was talking about and my goodness is it a little bit smaller than I remembered it to be and also uh, a little bit plainer but man do I remember watching this place and just thinking I want to construct something like this it's a quad cave spider spawner all of the cave spiders get funneled into a chamber and then I don't know, potentially drop out there? That doesn't make any sense, but they, they drop out somewhere. It's really cool. As is this. Wow, that's a nice addition to the base. I don't even remember that. Anyway, let's go through to statics. I am 99% certain this isn't statics place, but it is very cool. This also isn't a statics base. This is definitely Joe Hills' base. I remember this. I remember it because every single one of his thumbnails was just this build, <laughs> which definitely isn't optimized for the YouTube algorithm, but I like it. And I think there should be, yes, there's a little redstone testing area in here which should have a piston door in it somewhere <laughs> here it is <laughs> um i'm you know what i'm actually going to reconstruct this i wonder if i can reconstruct it joe would do entire episodes of hermitcraft dedicated to joke redstone contraptions and this one specifically sticks out in my mind because he spent an entire hermitcraft episode doing a redstone tutorial on how to construct this piston door <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid, but so, so ridiculously Joe Hills. I'm so impressed by Joe's consistency at being Joe. I tried my hardest, but I never found static space, sorry. But I have found Coralis' base, and this, this place is gorgeous. This is so, so good. These little modern villager houses, which were villager breeders. I actually remember him working on this little walkway, or I guess minecart way here. I, I can't remember where it leads, but this is really pretty. Okay, it leads out to a little farming area where it looks like a few of the sheep have definitely escaped. I mean, Coralis was just good at this game from the start, wasn't he? This is 2012. This is a 2012 Minecraft build. I would be happy with this build now. I mean, look at that bridge. Look at the perfect arc on that bridge there. This is just such a well-formed structure. This is lovely. This is really, really nice the way it just like blends in with the landscape. It's super cool. Oh, no way. <laughs> so this is B-Dubs. B-Dubs wasn't actually officially on the Hermitcraft server in season one, I don't think, but I think he visited. So hence the fact that he's got a little RV here. Wow. Yeah, this is lovely. This is lovely. I do remember parts of this, but I, I actually don't remember it being as incredible looking as this. This is so cool. Seeing this right here has brought back a combination of words that I haven't thought of for a very long time. That right there is the entrance to the hermit hurting hurdles. <laughs> Basically, Generic B decided to make it so that nobody could access his base. So he created a, a kind of, I don't know, set of traps or assault courses that the players had to go through to try and get in and they were legitimately difficult and if i remember correctly joe hills was actually the person that was the most persistent and eventually managed to crack his way in and i gotta say the inside of generic b's base is ridiculously cool i mean this is gorgeous it's another base that's centered around a little mob farm but this is beautifully executed i mean that is just really nice normally they're kind of covered 
but having it open like that actually looks great. There's all sorts of different farms and redstone contraptions dotted around. There's this area here, which I think is the end of the hermit hurting hurdle. So if you beat all of them, then you would descend down into the base through this, which is beautiful. This is a cool build. This is a very cool base. And that's a really cool idea. Making it so the hermits have to beat an obstacle course and have fun trying to get into your base. That is actually interesting. I might keep that idea in my back pocket for future seasons. This has been a really fun trip down memory lane for me. I mean, obviously this is the season where I wasn't a part of the Hermitcraft server. I purely viewed it as a fan. So revisiting all of these builds that I saw in all those videos was extremely exciting and I've massively enjoyed myself. I hope you enjoyed as well and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya.